go in this morning, wake my kid up for school. Mm-hmm. The first word she muttered on May 10th, 2024, she rolls over and goes, did the dodo bird go extinct because it was delicious? Love it. I hope that's why. As I got, sweetie, I don't think so, but I we used I, to I, drink champagne out of its beak. Yeah. <laughs> you are some des- desecrating the corpse of the animal we kill is always so important. That's why the turducken is the height of the culinary world. I mean, it's, yeah. You know, and the way you could top the turducken is like if you wrapped it in bacon, right? Oh, just, yeah. Just exactly. All right, we'll end it there. All right, there you go. So I learned something, Paul, throughout yesterday about the mail app that the out, the Outlook parentheses new app. Oh, okay, I was gonna say uh, you're you're learning about the mail app now is uh, the height of useless knowledge at this point. But okay, the Outlook new app, yes. So if you're using it like most people would, which is what mm-hmm. I would consider a classic Outlook experience, where you have your your email on the left in like a little column, and you click it, and it shows up on the right, so you can read the email. If yeah. you have that view and then you hit reply and you know it it turns that reading view into like a box where you can type your email to send. Mm-hmm. Spell check does not work in there. You cannot it'll under squiggle line in red, you will right yeah. click it to say please fix my error and it will give you no options. However, if you want to use spell check in the Outlook parentheses new app what you have mm-hmm. to do is take that same message and click the little button that says pop out where it pops it into a new window. Yep. And then, gosh darn it, you can use spell check. I'm not saying I recommend this, um, but you there are apps you can install like Grammarly, like desktop apps that will do spell check and grammar check and all this stuff in any window that supports whatever text, right? So well, they can't it can be annoying. Own spell check, right? I, I, I hesitate to put a third party tool on top of Outlook <laughs> no, I, I, a house of cards I, on top of toothpicks. I hear you. I'm not like I said, I'm not saying I recommend it. Uh yeah. in fact, more often than not in my case, um it's always trying to promote like Grammarly premium mm. so and it does all these removing Grammarly recently. Yeah, like so a, the, the, it. it actually has a feature now. Um I stopped using it in the browser. I I put I do put it on the desktop, but um there, it has a feature where you could just, uh, it's my favorite feature. You turn it off for an hour. You could just, like, say, just stop mm-hmm. checking here for an hour. Because when I'm writing in whatever app, you know, I just I need to, you know, it's like it's coloring it all, like, all yellow. And then if you take the time to look at their suggestions, I'd say it's about an 80% hit rate where it's like, no, that's, no. You know, so it's it's irritating. But nobody likes to be corrected, Brad. You know, that's the problem. Here we are. Uh, it is Friday, and last night, late last night, Dina Bass got to interview Sarah Bond, and right. it was a, and not not Dina's portion, but like the whole Xbox side of it was odd. Um, I don't know why this was how they revealed this. I and the oof, problem yeah. is, think I mean, think about it. Super vague, right? We we sort of know they're looking at this, you know. The, the one, well, no, two bits of new information are it's going to be a web-based store mm-hmm. for mobile, okay? Because, you know, it sits outside of the ecosystem, right? It's not something you get through, like, the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Um, it's launching in July. So well, that's what we learned. That. Oh, go on. I'm sorry. So unless, unless I misinterpreted what the follow-up correction was to this, and this is mm-hmm. where it's like, okay, they are just, like, hamstringing this together. Okay. It's not even going to be for game app purchase, like for, for games. Like you won't go to this web store, buy Candy Crush. You think it's for add-ons and stuff. It's, I, I believe they corrected, like Dina had to correct the, the statement from uh, Sarah. And it's actually, you can only do in-app purchases. So you can go into this uh, mobile game store, buy your candy gems or whatever, or your, okay. your season passes, yeah. and then go back. Yeah, so what that means is, uh, you go to an app store today, they have a free app like Fortnite yep. or whatever, and it says in-app purchases, you know? So it's mm-hmm. free. But now they're saying we're going to bypass the in-app purchase 30% fee thing by doing those outside of the app stores. Yeah, that's uh, not very... I mean, that's... Okay. I mean, it's like whatever, but... Anyway, uh, but regardless of the details, honestly, mm-hmm. the problem is it doesn't matter... Uh, look, they're sitting on chairs having a discussion... 
she says a couple of things. She says whatever number of statements about this thing. Dude, I don't know if you've been paying attention to this little world that we live in, but it generates a thousand more follow up questions. Right. right? <laughs> it's like, you know, think we, we live in a world where I, I got to make something up like you could write an article about like uh, Microsoft just updated loop to support bullet list or some whatever stupid feature. Mm -hmm. And the first comment will always be something to the tune of what about OneNote? It, it is always like everything yeah. leads to other stuff, you know? And as a writer, I will say, not always, but I mean, 90 something percent of the time, if we knew that we would have put that in there, mm -hmm. like the, all we have is what we wrote, you know, there are no more details. And, but I, I actually added something to the end of my little article about this last night, because I, I knew this was going to generate a thousand questions and we just don't, how do you put, if she was going to come out and say this, like she did, they mm. should have had a post ready that went into detail. Yeah, that maybe and I, I, some of it. I, and this is, this is the central problem with Microsoft, at least the parts of Microsoft I deal with. It's not good at communicating. You know, this is the whole, we bought Activision and we never, we're never going to talk about how we're going to release their games or not release their games to game pass. We're just going to let time go by. And it's like, guys, you, you, do you not understand your audience? You have to talk. You know, it doesn't matter what the answer is in a way. If the answer is sort of bad news for someone like me who wants to stuff now, I'd rather know that than every wait every two weeks. Oh my God, here we go. Another, oh, nothing. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, nothing. Say something. The right. beautiful part about this Activision stuff, by the way, <laughs> is yeah. somebody somewhere, maybe Microsoft, whoever says, we got to figure out our strategy for how we're going to do this to get the maximum impact. That's a statement that I do not believe that you should be saying after you committed to spending $70 billion. I feel like you probably should have had that like figured out. I couldn't, by the way, I, yes, I, I, you're getting off on a, a lot of my pet peeves this morning somehow. <laughs> one of the many other I, I, well listen I, I granted there are a million of them i am a porcupine when it comes to this stuff but the you can make any assertion and someone will just apologize for that company mm -hmm. will you know and so when i complain about uh the game pass stuff is like the perfect example uh whether i do it um you know, calmly, rationally, or uh, sarcastically, or passive aggressively, whatever it might be. There's always some idiot who's like, Paul, oh, you don't understand. This is like a billions of dollars, lots of markets, there's all these intervening and pieces, and there's this there, and blah, blah, blah. You, this company needs time, you know? I'm like, thanks. Thanks, idiot. I know that. And they know that. And they knew going into this in that year that they had where they were never getting approved and they could have been planning this the whole time. I, my point is they've had the time and they can communicate whatever the story is, but they don't. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, what's frustrating about it. If there is some, uh, I don't know, um, arc, I don't know what you call it. Like just a, a series of things that make it really complicated that go, you go game by game by game. And you say, well, this can't happen until this or something, whatever it is, whatever the matrix of nonsense that prevents this stuff from just happening. They knew what that was 18 months ago, you know? And I know that the two companies can't collude right, but they can in certain ways. No, but yeah. that doesn't mean they're not both working on it. Yeah. Of course they are. And that's why it's frustrating. Like Call of Duty is the biggest, what is paraphrasing, biggest title in the world, or at least biggest title yeah. for Activision. You should know what you're doing with that one. Like that's not yep. a, a nuance. You knew, you game. knew like what you were doing 18 months ago. Yeah. Yeah. No, it may have evolved may have changed that's fine i get it um but you you gotta give us you gotta give us something and and i just you know this um uh, this layoff thing has been is layoffs are never good studio nope. closures no one's claiming this is positive we've made the case i think yesterday whenever that like look th these things are gonna happen it, it there's a lot of overlap here um there's a lot of redundant bits there's a lot of things that just aren't successful that aren't going great there's a more nuanced story to these layoffs than we've heard so far because we're starting to hear little bits like well you know people inside are like actually you know there were only three people over here and they weren't doing anything anyway and they were trying to announce games so that they could get more resources and but they hadn't been doing anything for like 18 months and you know there's, there's all this stuff that goes to it who cares but the problem is you know again our little community here we overreact to everything and you know i 
I, look, I'm, I don't always get it right, but I, uh, in the Windows space especially, I spend a lot of time looking at what Microsoft is doing to Windows 11, and I'm trying to sound the alarm. Like, there's bad things happening. I'm like the canary in that coal mine, like I always say, and I'm trying to raise these issues that I think are important. And then there's a not not nothing story about an icon in the start menu, and all of a sudden, everyone in the world's like, oh my God, they're putting ads in the start menu. Of the offenses in Windows... Aside, leaving aside the fact that this thing's been in Windows 10 since 2015, literally, that is the most minor and is so far down the list, it doesn't matter. And I'm not saying the studio closures are like that, but we are overreacting to this. And now we're all navel gazing, existential threats. What is Xbox? It, what does it mean anymore? Does this thing have a chance? Does the, the leadership of this part of the company know what they're doing? And it's like, guys, get over yourselves. Jeez Louise. Like the the overall strategy for Xbox is sound. Doesn't mean they're going to win. Doesn't mean they got it right. But in the world in which they exist, consoles were not cutting it. So if you love Xbox, you want your games to come forward. You want to be able to play them everywhere, whatever, however you want to phrase it. They're doing, they're doing what they can do. If you want to see some squirming, uh, go, Dina asked, uh, so yeah, I, uh, yes. About the closures. <laughs> and th this is, I don't know, there's one of two people are at fault here. Either Microsoft's PR team, which put her on the stage, did not right. say, hey, maybe we should have a canned answer that's pretty non committal, non offensive to this the closures this week, because they were literally this week. Or right. Sarah just completely ignored what PR said. And the answer was well, very odd. I, is the by the way, I have a way to describe it. Yeah, I have a guess about this. Uh, her, uh, I, and you know Dina Bass, so oh, yeah. um, here's the problem. Um, this is obviously a sensitive thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Microsoft, whatever, they can't do things right. But I would, this is a weird way to say it, but I, I think that the timing of the closures and her appearance at the singer coincidental. Sure. And at some point three months ago, this event came up and they said, we will announce this thing. And this would have been seen as some awesome news. It would have been great. But because it happened right behind this course, and I'm sure someone said something to Dina Bass, like, hey, kind of don't want to go there. And, you know, Dina's like, I'm a journalist. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Dina does not care what Microsoft Dina wants. does not Dina care. And that's the point. And, I'm, and, and I, I don't mean, I don't say that, like, I blame Dina for this. I don't mean oh, no. it that way. But if you go and look at that clip, she started off saying, I know that you are not responsible for this decision and have nothing to do with it but would you please talk about this anyway and actually that kind of is on dina and and and, and again I, I i'm not saying she shouldn't have done it it's it's timely it's news it's whatever but um it it is a little unfair but i yes I, and i do think she was i think her answer was a stumbling form of if she does ask you this just explain that you're not involved with that part of, you know, that's not your responsibility, but Dina's like, she kicked her legs out from under by starting off by saying that she says, look, I know you're not responsible. So what, why don't you just give me your opinion about it? Basically. And it's like, wait a minute, what? She's, and I think that's, I think that's what threw her. I think yeah, that's what happened. But I mean, Sarah's still an executive in the Xbox org. And I know. even if it was not her, like literally signing the contract or whatever you do, Sure. She was in the room when these decisions were made, and I would be shocked to find out if she wasn't. Look, given the SLT I, of an Xbox team, she's on there. We, uh, I went through this at Penton before I came to throwout.com and, and BWW back in the day. And you're, you're part of a bigger organization that's mm -hmm. part of a bigger organization that's part of a bigger organization, you know, goes on and up the chain, right? And you get to the point where the people with the spreadsheets, are completely disconnected from the business that you're doing every day. And they don't understand that it's not just numbers. Right. And I think uh, we talked about this in windows weekly a little bit, but it, you know, it, it's hard not to look at this and think maybe something like that might've happened here, except that, like I said, there's a more nuanced story coming out of this. And um, I think spreadsheets were part of it, but, but also just people in the business who were like, yeah, I don't know what these guys are doing. They've been sitting there for, you know, they're not, actually doing anything you know um there's there's t there was a tough headline you must have seen this what's that game that uh that one of the studios that got canned had made some 
kind of a semi-popular game. It was like a not an indie game, but like a Hi-Fi like Rush. Yes, thank you. Oh yeah. Uh, there was a there was a great headline that said um, <laughs> Microsoft, you know, uh, you know, whatever fires the studio behind Hi-Fi Rush, comma says we need more games like Hi-Fi Rush, right? Which is, I have to give it's a pretty good headline. Yeah. But it, and it sounds like cynical and whatever. But the truth is, the the nuance behind that is we we my uh, Xbox do need more games like this and the guys that made that we're not going to make those (laughs) so like we're we're gonna get those from other people other parts of the company like and like i said i'm not justifying what they did i we talked about this i microsoft is a they just they do what they have to do and they just do it the wrong way you Mm -hmm. know they can't you know it's like ripping off a band-aid you know they're instead of just yanking the thing they're like you know and and uh, guys, you got to get past the acquisition. <laughs> you know, you, you got to figure out where it is and move forward. Because right now, it the perception's bad. A little bit. Yeah, I don't think last night didn't help. <laughs> for sure. Uh, to keep the good times rolling, everybody can try out the new Sonos app, which is uh, oh, as they oh. as they defined it. You are you are determined to fire me up today. Oh yeah, because that's Courage my other big is how thing. They define this new app. Okay, so this company go app itself. I I just just really quickly because I wrote a thing about this yesterday and about how horrible this app is and my whole history with it, right? And uh, I could not get this thing to work. I, I, this thing was crashing. It was stopping music playback. The web app to this moment, I've seen it because mm-hmm. it comes up and then it crashes. Like I've never successfully used the web apps to in multiple browsers, multiple PCs, Mac, Chromebook. TC, right? Like never anywhere with or without extensions. It's not something I'm doing. It just does not work. Um, I had to reset my, I have like a Sonos, um, not be, what do you call it? A little box that gives it its own network. It's a, uh, whatever it's called. Who cares? Anyway, I had to reset this thing. I had to bring everything back up online. I still can't get the web app to work, but last night I finally got the, uh, the app to work. I don't know if you've used this, but one of my central complaints about this app is that it's ponderous to edit a playlist while you're listening to music, which is something I do all the time. Wait, wait, when I listen to music, I've set up some playlists to play. Mm-hmm. Maybe I shuffle it. And as it's playing, I go in and I look at what's there and I, I pull stuff out of it because this is not the right time or whatever for this music. And then I look through, I search and I find and I add stuff. I play next, add to end of queue, whatever it is. Do you know what this new app doesn't have, Brad? And it's, I, I, I downloaded the user guide to see if I was missing something. Mm-hmm. I tried it on Android and iOS, iPad and iPhone. It doesn't have a way to edit the now playing queue. You cannot edit it. There's no way to remove a song. There's no way to add a song. There's no way to change the placement of a song that's already in the list. You can you can play a playlist. <laughs> that's what you can do. Or you can replace the current queue. That's uh, You can do that as well. There, this is like... Uh, we've released a new web browser, and uh, we're not going to support back. What? Uh, you can just start a, just open a new tab, and then go and manually go back to that thing. Like, th- what? That's how bad this app is. It's horrible. Looks nice, if that helps. But yeah, terrible. Anything else? Yeah. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. Bring up <laughs> one more topic. Sonos app is very upsetting so i as of right now have not updated to it yet and i've tried to figure out how to turn it off my problem is i wrote this big editorial about this thing yesterday and now i've gotten it to work Hmm. and it doesn't work right so i actually have a lot more to say about it and one of the things i would have if i had just held off a day and had written that sonos editorial today the thing the comment i would have made is remember when they went from like s1 to s2 Mm -hmm. and it was like big fury over that and you know uh, that whole drama the right way to do this app they could have shipped it in its current state as s3 or whatever they could call it anything they should not have replaced the current app because basic functionality is missing so to ship it as a new app this will be the app going forward we're going to improve it over the next six months which is something they said by the way and we're going to add those features back that you're missing because there's a bunch of other features that i don't care about that other people are complaining about it shocks me. I have not 
yet any seen anyone talk about the basic features that are missing in this app. But there are lots of complaints about this app. Ship it as a separate app. Let people use the current app, which for all its sucktitude, at least allows you to edit the queue ponderously, but you can do it, right? I, I, I don't think. Sonos to software is Microsoft to communication. Hmm. Which yeah. is bad for Sonos because they should. <laughs> I know. Their hardware is awesome. And if you control that stuff from like Spotify or uh, AirPlay is decent, although, you know, there's some, there's some you know, it, it can be buggy or whatever, but it works. Like you can do it. Um, I finally got, you know, stuff cranked up yesterday after I reset everything. And it was like, okay, like play, playback's great. Like it's good. And the device selection, so it's all good. But um, you, can't, you can't edit the queue? Are you kidding me? I mean, that's just, isn't that the first feature? <laughs> like, isn't that the first thing you add? No? I don't know. I don't know. I think I know why the iPad Air exists, by the way. I don't, well, you know, that's okay. it. Okay, there you go. You did it. All right, so, <laughs> so I, but, I, but it was more serious. I think I figured it out why, because I was looking at them. I, I shouldn't buy an iPad. I don't need an iPad, but I want no. an iPad. And yet, so the thing is, I think the iPad, Pro, the iPad Air should disappear. No, and, well, the I know, iPad, I know it, the iPad Pro sense, slot in, it should there. slot into that price point. That that they don't need both of those things. Like I it's, it's a, has, um, I think that's part of it, uh, because it has it has an M2 in it, correct? Isn't that so right? Yeah, who cares about it? I think stuff. part of it, it is that there's the they they could do things on the pricing if you ignore the pricing for right now. Mm -hmm. It's also part of the the yield, right? They're going to get a number of these chips. No, they I, keep I know that putting yeah, yeah. M2s no. and stuff. It's like ah, we, where else can we shove this thing? I um. Here's a here's a little um, uh, an exercise for the listener. Mm -hmm. Do this. Go back. Go out and look at all the Mac and Apple websites. All of them will have some version of a. Here are the differences between the iPad Air and the M the in the Pros. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes there'll be a chart, screen, RAM, cores, the whole thing. Right. All of them are doing this, and then I want you to read their commentary, their advice about why one would choose the Pro. And what you will see to a one is the most nonsense of vague language that, uh, it, because no one has an answer. Mm -hmm. There is no reason. But what they'll say is, if you're a prosumer or a blah, 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 whatever you are, and you have workloads that can take advantage of the whatever that's in the pro, there's, there's no such thing. There is no answer. Like these people are giving advice because they're in the Apple world and this exists, but there is no, there is no <laughs> like reason to choose these things. There's no such thing. And I know there are these stupid apps that edit video sort of, or do this sort of, but there's no, there, no one can point to here are the 10, like it runs Microsoft office better, <laughs> you know, or whatever that doesn't exist. I, I, cha I, I challenge you, uh, everyone listening says, please go, waste the time read those articles and then come back and, and tell me what the real world advice is there. There's nothing there. They, they can say nothing. And so they say nothing. It, the better it's better comparison ridiculous. that you don't see enough of, which is hilarious is that the iPad mini actually has a better processor than the new iPad, but is the iPad <laughs> mini, which is smaller than the new iPad is a hundred dollars more, $150 more. Holy cow. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, that's a little, yeah. Um, Someone made the case in one of those, uh, there was also, there was an article that said something like the one thing Apple could do to simplify their lineup. And it, this is uh, an okay point. Like they have an iPad air in two sizes. They have an iPad pro in two sizes. They have an iPad and an iPad mini. Isn't that really just an iPad in two sizes? Yeah, but they, run, that they have different if, CPUs. Right. And maybe when the iPad mini is updated later this year, it will, well, you know, it is a better brand. So uh, display maybe the worst th processor. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe the right, but see, Apple doesn't do these things. Um, maybe those things become the same product, but with different screen sizes, which would be logical. It would make sense. The problem is like, they have what, four different versions of Apple pencil with weird, like works here, doesn't work here, that, all that stuff. Now they have like different core and storage and RAM arrangements. And they have like, they've turned this thing that should just be simple. It's like I use an iPad to read and watch movies, or I sometimes use an iPad to type and maybe draw, maybe take notes. And you've just described one product, maybe two. And they have like, what do they have, 18? I mean, what do they have now? Like, what is it? It's crazy. Like, it's too much. 
Steve Jobs. I know he's in hell, but if he wasn't, he <laughs> would be rolling in his grave right now at what they've done to his baby. It's it's a shame because this great. product could be is it's great. It actually is great. I'm sorry. It's great. It it's just this is too much of it. Curious, how do you feel about airline food? <laughs> I'm not I don't really it doesn't bother me that much. 